Now we're going to talk about why the production possibilities curve is bowed out. Why is it bowed out, uh, you know, like, like that? Why does it look like that instead of, you know, like, like, like this, straight line? Why, why do we do it that way? Well, because we are modeling, okay, let, let's but look back at all the things that, we, we get a lot of mileage out of this, this production possibilities curve model. Uh, it models scarcity, okay, scarcity. Economics is all about scarcity. And because of scarcity, we have trade-offs. We've got, you know, we can't have everything. And when we trade one thing for another, the, the cost of that, what we give up to get one thing, uh, is uh, what we give up of another thing. So it's what we give up to get something, our opportunity costs. So it models scarcity, trade-offs, opportunity costs. And economic growth, when uh, over time as it shifts out, and one more thing, I mean, there's a lot of stuff for one, for one little model. Uh, and it models um, the law of increasing opportunity cost. Increasing opportunity cost. I mean, that is, as we uh, produce more and more and more and more and more and more and more, we're going to have to give up more and more and more and more of something else. And uh, another way to say this uh, is, is the, the low-hanging fruit okay, principle. We're going to pick the low-hanging fruit first. Okay? When we pick fruit, we don't start with getting a 20-foot ladder and going to the top. We usually start at the stuff that we can reach up and grab the easiest and then we get a ladder and get the next easiest. And then we get a tall ladder and get the next easiest. And then, you know, we start with the low-hanging fruit. And then we get the highest, hardest to get fruit. Well, that's what we do here. Now, uh, for example, um, during World War II, when tanks were being produced for World War II, they didn't convert dairy farms into tank uh, production, they converted auto factories. See, an auto factory is already kind of familiar. A car, a car isn't exactly like a tank, but it's a lot closer than, than milk and butter. Okay, now eventually they may have converted milk and butter production into tanks, but they started with the low-hanging fruit. The low-hanging fruit was Auto factories, that's what you begin with. All right, well, here's, here's a little uh, example. I mean, it's a little ridiculous, but it gets the point across. Uh, that's the main thing here. Let's say we have two goods. Okay, one is ballet. So we got ballet production, and we have football production. So that's what we do. We do football, we do ballet. That's it. That's us. That's our, that's our culture. That's our society. So, let's say that we are right here. That's where we are. We, we produce zero ballet, and let's say we have 20 units of football. Whether that's 20 games, 20 leagues, 20 whatever, it doesn't matter. Just that's how many units of football we do. Well, we think, as the, the benevolent leaders of our society thinks, uh, that uh, we could use a little more culture. <laughs> okay, we could use a little mellowing out. We're a little coarse and a little rough and a little uh, ill-mannered. <laughs> okay, with this game of football. And I love football. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, we think that producing a ballet, let's start a ballet. You know, that'll fix the problem. 
So we decided to, to go with one ballet. Now, all of our resources are currently involved in football. All of them. That's all we do. How we, are we going to get a ballet going? We're going to have to move resources away from football and into ballet. Let's say that's 18. So we're going to produce at this point on the production possibilities curve. Now, keep the low-hanging fruit principle in mind here. Who are we going to transfer over from football into ballet? We're going to transfer the low-hanging fruit. Those who are most productive in producing ballet and least productive in producing football. Okay? Think of tanks and dairy farms. Okay? So... Well, you know, ballet includes a lot of jumping up and dancing and stuff, so we might get some of those athletes who are kind of tall and slender and, uh, oh, I don't know, a wide receiver, uh, you know, uh, some of those guys. Um, anyway, we're going to move those over. Uh, and... Uh, we're going to get our first ballet at a cost of two footballs. All right. Now, I'm not saying wide receivers aren't uh, highly <laughs> engaged in football production. They're highly valuable. They are. There, there are a couple of flaws in this example, but just, just hang in there with me. Okay. So, we like what we see. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. This is doing wonders for our, for our people. So we think, well, if a little bit is good, uh, more will be better. So we decide to go for a second ballet. And we decide to produce at this point right here. Okay, right there. Well, what is the opportunity cost of the second ballet? Well, the second ballet caused us to go from 18 down to 13. But here's the thing. So, get out your fingers. That's five. Okay. Now, notice the first, the first ballet cost two units of football. The second ballet cost five units of football. Law of increasing opportunity cost. The opportunity cost has increased. Why? Because we've already transferred our best ballet people and our least good football people. So that's why we were able to get a ballet with very little loss in football. But now we're going with the next best ballet people and you know what? We're going to have to dip in. A little bit. Some of the people we transfer from football are pretty darn uh, important to football. So it's going to cause us to, to give up more football because these people are pretty good at football production. They're not quite as good as at ballet production. At least these guys aren't as good as these guys. Okay. That's why that second ballet costs us more than the first one. Okay, now we are so excited. Our, our society is just doing great. So we decided, we, you know what, we're going to go all ballet. We're, we're done with football. We're going to do ballet from now on, nothing but ballet. So uh, we're going to go with that third uh, ballet right there. And, uh, of course, to get the resources to go to that third ballet... Okay, from clear it here to here, we're going to have to give up the rest of our football resources. Now, now the third ballet, what's the opportunity cost? Go from 13 down to zero football. 
that third ballet is costing us 13 units of football. How come? Because the people now being transferred out of football into ballet suck at ballet. Okay, these are great at football. These are, these are resources that are very narrow, narrowly suited for football. We're talking offensive linemen, okay? These guys can't do ballet worth a darn, okay? They, they, they can only, like, do one little move or, or something. So they aren't very good at ballet. It's, it just takes all, all of them to get to crank out one the, that third ballet. So the opportunity cost um, for the first ballet was two. For the second ballet was five, and for the third ballet is thirteen. So we've got one, two, three. Opportunity costs going from two to five to thirteen. Law of increasing opportunity costs, that is what we mean. That the more we produce a something, the more we have to give up a something else because of that low hanging fruit. We're gonna pick the low hanging fruit first. And the high-hanging fruit is more costly to get. It just takes more effort. It takes more capital. We, we're going to have to have a ladder. And uh, for the highest, we're going to have to be, have a big, expensive ladder, right? So, the, so that is why. And we observe this, you know, it, 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 again, the bottom line here is it simply models the fact that resources tend not to be equally suited for all types of production. There you go.